It's Thursday, August 2nd, and you're listening to The Geek at Geek News Central, show number 788, sponsored in part by GoDaddy.com. Our August special for all new and existing GoDaddy customers, save 20% off your order. Use promo code go 20 off 2 Geek News Central is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Hey, guys, got a great show lined up for you. You know what comes next? Strap in. Here it comes. All right, people, I need a go no go for the Geek News Central podcast. Digital archive recorders. We're go fly. Microphone. We're go fly. Video feed. Go. Web browser. Go. RSS data stream aggregator. Go fly. Interflux totism suppressor. All right, I'm confused. Host readiness check. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. The Geek News Central podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go. Q Todd in five. Button, button, who's got the button? Four. There is no pause for alarm. Three. Everybody hold on to something. Two. Just press the button. One. It's showtime. Aloha and welcome to the Geek News Central podcast, coming to you as live as it can be from the beautiful state of Hawaii via the Geek News Central studio, overlooking Greater Honolulu. Everyone, welcome to the show. Of course, my name is Todd Cochran, and I want to welcome you to Geek News Central. This is a show that I do twice a week, every Monday and Thursday night, like clockwork. We start here uh, live, for those of you that are still awake, about 8 p.m. Hawaiian Standard Time. And uh, for the rest of you that uh, are fast asleep in your beds, don't worry. You can uh, you can catch the show really at any time by coming over to geekingcentral.com. You can watch it on the website. You can watch us on your Roku, on your Boxy, on your Samsung Smart TV, on your and I tell you the whole range of devices. And of course, you're coming to us via your iPad. You can subscribe to us via the podcast app, of course, in your Android device or in your iPhone or iPad. So definitely uh, get subscribed to the show. And we want to remind you, of course, you can always. Uh, to uh, get connected with us here, all you really have to do is is reach out on Twitter at Geek News. Is this the place to go? Of course, my email address is geeknews at gmail.com. And our hotline, which is available 24 hours a day, is 619-342-7365. I've had a great week here. It's been busy. Hawaii has been beautiful. It's been fantastic to be home for as long as I have and not having to do any trips. So... It looks like August is kind of shaping up the same. I don't think I'm going to have to go anywhere during the month of August, which is which is superb because uh, unheard of for me to be home more than five or six weeks. But uh, it's it's good to be here and uh, and just uh, hanging. And it just it just works out nicely. Hey, I do want to give you guys a rundown quickly tonight. Uh, for those of you that are watching, um, I'll kind of go through this and show you guys. But for those of you that are listening, um, I definitely have these linked up in the show notes for you to check out. But, you know, obviously I want you to come over to uh, Geek News Central at geeknewscentral.com. Uh, get subscribed to our newsletter. That way you'll get the show notes delivered directly to your inbox immediately following the show. Get subscribed to the show as well via iTunes, Zoom, or uh, just a standard RSS feed. And really, this is kind of the way to uh, stay abreast of what's going on and, uh, and stay connected uh, um, on a day-to-day -day basis. All our writers uh, produce a lot of great content on the website. So we definitely want you to uh, to check all that content out. Of course, you can uh, find me over on Facebook as well. If you come over to facebook.com forward slash geek news, that's our show page. Going to start using that a lot more. So definitely consider uh, coming over there and uh, and liking the page and following the updates. And you can find me on uh, on Google Plus at uh, as Todd Cochran as well. So that's a great way to to stay abreast. So. Really, we want you to just get subscribed and get connected to us. That way you'll you'll never miss a single episode. But I want to give, of course, a warm welcome to all of our tens of thousands of listeners that are tuned in. We want to thank you guys for being here and being part of the family. And, of course, those of you that are watching, uh, hey, I hope you're enjoying us on your on your big screen. If that's how you so chose to uh, watch us. And those of you that are, are portable and listening, hey, it's uh, great as well. The... Um, what we've done is I've, I've added something to the, um, the lineup, and I talked about it a little bit on the last show. And for those of you that are on the live streaming site tonight at, at live.geeknewcentral.com, you're going to find that there's a live streaming audio feed as well, and that's live 24-7. I have that up, and it's available. You can find that at geeknewcentral.com as well. It's in the second column of the website. 
So if you ever get in a situation where you're basically at work and you can't download the show and you want to listen to it, we'll always have the latest episodes up in the live stream. It's basically playing in the, in repeat mode to be able to uh, to tune in. So it's something I want to remind you guys and, and keep uh, promoting. Of course, tonight's show would not be possible without our sponsor, GoDaddy.com. And we want to thank GoDaddy for being a longtime sponsor here at the show. And I'm going to tell you, we got a great deal for the month of August as well. And what we're going to do is this is a this is a fantastic offer. You're going to save 20% off your order. And this is for new and existing customers. So when you go to purchase something, you're going to be able to use this new promo code, go 20 off 2 You can find the link to it, of course, at the website. That's going to save you 20% on your order. And I'm everything they're telling me is this is going to be good. Now, I was looking through the rules of this offer, and it says not applicable to ICANN fees, taxes, transfers, bulk pricing, premium domains, search engine visibility, advertising budget, or gift cards, and they cannot be used in conjunction with any other offer. So that's an important thing here. If you go to the website and you're uh, clicking on one of their on-site ads, uh, you're, you're not going to be able to use this code with another sale, discount, or promotion. So um, just be aware of that when you try to use that promo code. Of course, if that one doesn't work out for you real well and it, you don't save a lot of money, you can come again over to geeknewcentral.com forward slash GoDaddy. All my codes there. i got to stack them for you to use. And really, that's the best way to save the most amount of money is just uh, mix and match and try to see what you can find to to save yourself the best cash. Sometimes I'll use one code for one type of purchase and another code for another. Instead of doing two, one order on one, I'll do two separate orders, and that seems to work out good for maximizing code use. And uh, we definitely appreciate GoDaddy for being a sponsor here. And uh, Chris talked about uh, Warren, my good friend over there at GoDaddy, stepping down as CEO and uh, looking forward to working with the, with the new leadership team that's coming in. But uh, trying to get a handle on that and uh, making sure that we have a good straight connection to the top when we have to uh, basically intervene for any of your types of issues that you may have, which we've had from time to time that's come up during the uh, um, years we've been having them on as a sponsor. Well, this week, uh, got a lot of tech for you. I've got a whole stack of stuff here. We'll get into that here in just a few minutes. Uh, of course, as we do on every show, we, we do a little bit of time just talking about what's happening around here. Uh, kids in Hawaii are back in school, and you know most of you that are in the lower 48 or the continental United States, so your kids are still on uh, summer break and will be for another number of weeks. But here in Hawaii, it's kind of a year-round schedule. Kids are back, so that means school open house, get to meet all the new teachers and stuff, so we're making rounds doing that. My wife's uh, mother is back uh, from Vegas and uh, making trips, visiting other relatives, so she's back here at the house for another two or three weeks before she heads back to uh, Japan. And I've also, uh, how many of you have done your, well, a primary is coming up here in Hawaii. So I have done my civic duty. I've got my, my ballot all filled out. I'm going to be sending that into uh, uh, the state of Hawaii and, and voting <laughs> and making sure that, uh, you know, I do the, do the deed there and get that in. Absentee balloting, that's the way to go. Just uh, don't have to go fight standing in lines or anything like that. Do it right here at the house. Plus, I can show the kids the ballot and all that stuff. It makes it fun to do. Hey, we're going to be doing a special deal on Sunday. And what I want to do is the the Mars Curiosity rover is uh, going to be landing. And uh, if, if I have my times right, we're going to start the, uh, the hangout. It's 630 Hawaiian Standard Time, 930 Pacific, 1230 in the morning Eastern. And I know many of you are, many of you are going to have to get up and go back to work on Monday morning, but this is one of these geek events that you really don't want to miss. The, the, uh, the Curiosity rovers do to land at 1.30 in the morning Eastern. So um, I'm all about uh, having fun, watching this thing, talking as a group. So if you want to come hang out, I've invited a few folks to, to join in, and we'll see how many people we can get to... Uh, come and hang out, and not everyone's going to be able to be up on the video, but everyone can be in and, and commenting. We're going to be doing a live one, so uh, feel free to do that. Uh, come out and hang out with us Sunday um, for the uh, for the Mars uh, Curiosity rover landing, and uh, we'll have a lot of fun seeing if it lands or if it goes splat. So we hope it doesn't. We hope they have a successful landing, but definitely uh, keep that in mind. Of course, on your agenda too, Saturday morning tech 
and we're definitely going to have some guests on this Saturday. So uh, have set your alarm clocks and get up and join us at 9 a.m. Eastern or those of you on the West East Coast, 12 noon Eastern. We'll be getting going. As I talked about in the last show, we uh, looks like we're locked in for our CES coverage, broadcasting outside of the North Hall. Pretty excited about that, so we're starting planning uh, planning there. Well, I tell you, what I want to do here um, before we get into the content, we'll take one more time to uh, acknowledge a sponsor. And, you know, this is a a tool and an application that uh, I absolutely cannot live without. You know, I've been using um, GoToMeeting by Citrix for, for a number of years. And it's just, you know, it is with their HD Faces integration, what they've been able to do here is we now have the ability to, I guess for a better word, have this face-to-face conversation, even though it's via the computer. And it just works, folks. It really, really does. And, you know, I think what is important about this is that, you know, when you're meeting with someone, be able to see their facial expressions, see how they react to stuff. You know, it just is absolutely critical in being able to, um, you know, have that response time to, you know, what they're basically you know, reacting to the presentation, be able to, you know, change your presentation on a, on a whim and so forth. And, you know, even cooler about it is because it's the summer and people are away, you can join with an iPad. You know, you basically can grab the iPad and if you're in the car or you're on travel or whatever, you can join a meeting right from the iPad and you can actually participate with the HD Faces feature as well. And again, you feel instantly connected and it's 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 like you're being in the same room even if you're thousands of miles away. So as a listener of this show, you can try GoToMeeting for free for 30 days. Don't wait for this special offer. Visit GoToMeeting.com and when you get over there, click on the Try It Free button and use the promo code podcast. Now I'm going to bring up the website here so you can see it. So really it's simple. You go over to GoToMeeting.com, you click the Try It Free button, fill out the information and use the promo code podcast. That's the most important thing here. And uh, don't let those meetings be impossible. It's possible with Citrix with GoToMeeting. It's real easy. Just, you know, start up the session and get going. And uh, you meet with uh, one person or a, a group and uh, that's that's an important thing, you know, is uh, you can scale it if you need to. And uh, this summer, it's a way to save money and also do business uh, efficiently. So give th- GoToMeeting a try. I want to thank them for being a longtime sponsor here at, at Geek New Central um, as well. All right, let me go ahead and uh, open up the stack of content that I have. And uh, let me kind of switch from intro mode to let's get ready to rock and roll mode. And um, did you? I think I showed this once before. Did I show this to you guys? This is the live site. Those of you that haven't been on the live site before, you can uh, definitely go over there and check it out, live.geeknewcentral.com. So let me see here. What have I got in the stack? And uh, let me bring this up. And, uh, oh, yeah, let's, this, I got some good stuff here to start off with. And I'm, I'll go ahead and flip back. You know, Verizon, a few days ago, got uh, really... They made it. They made a settlement with uh, the folks over at uh, the FCC. This tethering settlement is is very important here because now those of you that have Verizon accounts, if you've been paying extra for tethering, you don't have to do that no more. Get rid of that twenty dollar plan, and you'll be able to download apps now that have been banned in the past that allow you to tether, even though that may not be enabled on your on your on your phone. Uh, with that settlement, Verizon has agreed to pay $1.25 million to the U.S. government. And this was uh, a big deal because, remember, they were able to get that 700, meg- 700 megahertz spectrum, that block C. And part of the licensing on that was they shall not deny, limit, or restrict the ability um, of their customers to use their device and applications of their choice on this licensee C block. So, Basically, the uh, Verizon had uh, forced Google and others to remove 11 apps from its app stores that allowed customers to use their smartphone um, to create mobile Wi-Fi hotspots for other devices. Now, if you do pay the 20 bucks extra, you get a little more bandwidth. But for most of us, if we're just going to hotspot once in a while with our device, um, this is going to be fine for what you're really going to need to uh, to use here. So. 
Um, anyway, so definitely check it out and uh, check out what the FCC has uh, basically uh, struck into the uh, agreement here with uh, with Verizon. But uh, I, I don't think if I was uh, paying for a tethering fee that I would do it anymore. And, um, you know, it's 20 bucks back in your pocket and you can now download these apps and use them and uh, Verizon can't say a, a doggone thing about it. So this is uh, this is big news here on the uh, on the Verizon tethering. Now you got to make sure that your phone is on the 700 megahertz wireless spectrum. And I don't know if that uh, that would obviously be probably Google phones at this time. I don't think there's any iPhones on that specific frequency, but um, definitely the Androids for sure at at a, at a bare minimum. Now, because of uh, movement in digital, uh, this. Summer, 400,000 Americans have dumped pay TV. And, uh, so, you know, that's, it's a, it's a decent number. Uh, that isn't, um, that isn't a huge number, but, um, this, um, it, it's a nice, uh, I guess for better words, a nice round number. I'd like to see a lot more people cutting the cord. Uh, my wife is actually back in the mode for us to, to maybe recut the cord finally. So, uh, um, she's had her six or seven months here of, uh, of paid television fix again, and it's time to uh, to do that. So we're close to being able to cut the cord here again. But um, 169,000 people, and you know maybe it'll be 169,001, actually uh, disconnected from Time Warner. So um, that's a pretty big number uh, for Time Warner to lose that uh, that many residential subscribers. But uh, they did gain a number of subscribers at a at a total of about 100,000 that signed up strictly for high-speed data. So people are trading it off. You know, they're, they're getting rid of the television and they're adding more data services. So they kind of make sense in, in the scheme of things. There's a great article um, that was posted by Dalton Caldwell. And this is, shows you how things are working in the business world right now. And this was picked up. He wrote it on his uh, blog on Wednesday. And this has basically been um, something that has tr essentially stirred up the, the tech world. Matter of fact, uh, one of his board members for his company had to step down and he's being replaced by another uh, VC that's uh, in his group. But, you know, I've talked about Dalton already and uh, the app.net. Um, and him trying to raise five hundred thousand dollars, and he got eleven days to do that to basically build uh, an open, basically an open source Twitter. But he wrote this pretty revealing um, expose to Mark Zuckerberg, and I just want to take a few minutes and go over this. He says in June he met with uh, met at Facebook headquarters in uh, Menlo Park, California, and he was. Um, in this meeting was a vice president of engineering and products, a vice president of partnerships, a vice president of corporate and business development, and a director developer of relations slash open graph. So he had some heavy hitters in there. And as he understood it, the meeting was for him to present and demonstrate a new iOS app and service that the, his team had been building um, on the Facebook platform. So, this was, you know, he was hoping that he was going to get uh, executive level support for the impending product launch. But a few minutes into the meeting, the meeting took an odd turn when the individuals in the room explained that the product that they, that his team was building was competitive with the Facebook's own announced Facebook app center. And the executives explained that they would hate to see him compete against them, um, basically his their app against his app, and that uh, since he was such a nice guy with a good reputation, that they wanted to acquire his company to help build Facebook's own app center. Well, you know, he's hitting across the face with this, uh, you know, basically it's this implied threat that we don't want you competing with us, so we're going to buy you out because you're a nice guy, and we want you to work for this as a ac acquisition hire. And he basically told the Facebook people, I'm not interested in this. He says, if Facebook want to have a serious conversation about acquiring his team or product, 
He'd entertain the idea, but he had no interest in seeing the product shut down and joining Facebook. And this is what has been going on a lot. If you notice Facebook buys stuff up and it gets absorbed and you never see it again, it's the it's a kiss of death when they do these acquisition um, acquisition and hiring. So this, he goes on here and, and writes a pretty, it's just, it's frank and uh, not necessarily flattering. But, uh, you know, he basically feel that, felt that he had been, was being strong-armed. And um, he basically walked away from that meeting and scrapped his entire app that he was developing, knowing that, you know, if he was going to try to compete with these guys, it wouldn't be a, uh, it was not going to be a good uh, end result. And he goes on to say later, he says, Mark, and he's, he addressed this originally to Mark Zuckerberg. He said, I know for a fact that my experience was not an isolated incident. He says, several other startup founders and Facebook employees have told me that what I experienced was part of a systematic M&A, mergers and acquisition formula, that their team employed. And um, basically, he says that uh, your team doesn't seem to understand that being good negotiators versus implying that you will destroy someone's business built on their very open platform. And uh, he says he knows about these intimidation-based negotiation tactics. And he says he experienced those for years while dealing with the music industry. Bad faith negotiations are inexcusable. And I didn't want to believe your company would stoop this low. Quote, unquote, my mistake. So this is, you know, you think about what's going on in this space. And we've talked about this a lot. You've got Twitter. You've got Facebook. Uh, even to a certain extent, you've got Google Plus or these verticals and there are these silo systems where we're all churning information into them and putting our lives and souls and tweets and everything else out there which is cool it's fun we choose to do that but at the same time you know we're we're building other people's dreams and it goes into something we're going to talk about twitter here in a minute because you know i i'm purely astounded by you know what i essentially have been reading in the news over the past week about some of the things that Twitter has been doing. And very specifically, and let me see if I can uh, find this article that I actually have up here at Geek News Central, is I wrote a post last night on the website that talks about privacy extinction event. And, um, and, and, and this is just another, and this isn't specifically about Twitter, and we'll get into this in a second, but here you've got, well, let me, let me hold on that, and then I'll, I'll come back to it. Let's talk about the um, Twitter trust and safety. And, and, and this made my blood boil. I and mean, this may have been started when the last show, but you know, Twitter essentially, and we're talking about these, okay, here you've got Facebook strong-arming Dalton to basically acquire his company or we're going to run you over type of attitude, and that's how he implied it. Then you've got Twitter, who is basically telling all of its devs out there, hey, don't build on top, build into Twitter, you know, and basically they're tightening up their API and dropping the hammer and, and developers are like, whoa, 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 I'm not going to do anything more. I'm not going to build any more cool tools because I'm afraid I'm going to be shut out. Then you have users on Twitter who are getting their account suspended because of business relationships that Twitter has with uh, specifically NBC. And this, this just blew up this week. Got a gentleman by the name of Guy Adams uh, who had a Twitter account, and he had been tweeting uh, some pretty harsh stuff on NBC and their coverage of the Olympics. So, you know, whatever your opinion is of that is, is what it is. But he apparently busted their policy by publishing the email address of an NBC executive in one of his tweets and essentially what happened was, was that uh, Twitter, according to some stuff I saw in some uh, UK uh, articles, Twitter contacted NBC and said, hey, this, this, uh, this, uh, this guy is uh, posting stuff about uh, one of your execs, a sports executive, and uh, here's how you uh, put in a, uh, basically, a complaint on him. So, 
you know, I can see how this went down. You know, you got some staffer says, hey, I've been watching these tweets by this journalist, Gary Adams. He's been bashing NBC and he's been pretty snarky about it. I see he just posted one of the executive emails, which I think is against our user policy because, you know, I think because it's not really even clear in their tr user policy. And since he's hurting the image of NBC and Olympic coverage, let's do them a favor. Let's uh, let's tell our business partner about this guy and have them submit an abuse for him. And when they did, they suspended his account. So Twitter ha has had to issue an apology. And this apology says that, uh, hey, well, we... We we violated our own terms, you know. We we uh, we don't normally tell people that there's an issue with uh, someone else's tweets, but they did. Someone in this business unit um, did this, um, and can you trust Twitter? And and it, and it goes back. My my main point is here, and this is what I want everyone to understand. Okay, this is kind of a long way to get there, and. I guess it ties into the privacy stuff as well, but to a certain extent, if you're going to entrust Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus with all this stuff, just know that you know what you put in there may never ever come out and it may go off into Never Never Land. And if you have something important to say, say it on your own website, something that you control, something that you own. You know, that's why one of the things I've been such a huge proponent of blogging and writing stuff on Geek News Central, and you guys will see that I've started to write more articles again on GNC. I thought it was time to get back in the saddle on that part, was that, you know, it's time for me to, you know, come out and say what I've been all pent up, and I say it during the show, but sometimes it needs to be written and put down. Um, there, you know, we have to watch out for our personal profiles and everything else. And we have to call these people out, call a spade a spade. Now, that isn't to say that what you write is not necessarily going to be used against you because they can come back and go after you in court on any of these sites by saying the wrong thing and making the wrong implication and, you know, and, and, and trying to state fact versus opinion. And you, if your facts get, you know, if you say an opinion and then you get some stuff wrong, that's one thing. But if you state a bunch of, say, this is the facts, you know, you're going to end up, uh, if you make one mistake, you're going to, someone's going to own your house. But you still have the ability to write stuff in your opinion up on your websites. And I think it's important that you do that. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I can trust Twitter anymore. And, um, you know, because up to this point, I thought they'd been pretty transparent. Now, they, they admitted their mistake. Don't get me wrong. They, they admitted what they did. But would if this guy had not been a reporter with a UK newspaper, would he have ever got his account back? You know, this guy had enough pull that he basically ended up, uh, you know, causing probably the story of the week. And once again, the Olympics goes on the back channel, at least for those of us on the tech side here. And Twitter becomes a story. Now, let's take this and, and let's switch gears here a little bit. And let's talk about privacy. Now, I'm not saying that any of you do this. Okay, but imagine, and, and, and just imagine if you visited an adult website. And when you visited that adult website, your profile was put up on the webpage saying, hey, Todd was here. Um, and then every time someone that you knew visited that same adult website, they would know Todd was there. Well, to this point, that hasn't been happening on adult websites. And this is an extreme example. But what we have and what we're seeing here on the World Wide Web, the intranets, is we become a place of absolutely no piracy. And I think we've all realized that we're being collected upon on every site that we go to. They're collecting cookie information. They're collecting what we're clicking. They're, they're watching how long we're staying on the page. And they're building a database on what ads to serve us and how to, you know, what list to put us in and how to fit us into a demographic. We know they're doing that behind the scenes. But, you know, to this point, you've been an IP. And maybe they get a profile on you and a name and stuff, but generally you're one of millions in a database and it's, 
you know, they're serving to you. So it's kind of impersonal. Now, that still creeps you, most of us out. But the idiots over at Quora.com have decided that every time a registered user of Quora.com visits a page on their website, they're going to say, hey, Todd was here. They're going to put my little profile right up on there and say, hey, Todd viewed this page. Now, I read a lot of web pages during the day. And sometimes I read stuff. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Let me send that over to my raw voice team. And I'll copy that link, paste it into a mailing list or into our email system. I'll say, hey, guys, check this all out. So what's going to happen from a strategic standpoint? If I found something that I'm thinking is going to be a trend or something I'm trying to say, we need to look at this closer. So all of a sudden, Todd's profiles on the page, Angelo's profiles on the page, Barry's profiles on the page, um, Brian and Aunt, uh, the whole team's profiles there. And then my competitor shows up on the page and says, hey, Todd, Barry, Brian, Angelo, we're all on that page. Well, what do they know that I don't? And now that's an extreme case. But the same thing goes with, let's say you're on some site that you're researching cancer. You're researching something that's going on in your life. And you're looking, you know, if Cora is going to do this, how long before every website in the country all of a sudden say, hey, Todd was there? The simple action of lurking and visiting a web page is going to get broadcast to everyone in your social circle in the world. I do not, you know, I love you guys. You're, you're my, you know, you're my Ohana. You're my family. Okay. But, you know, you guys know about as much about me as probably anyone else does because I share a lot on this show. But let's be straightforward here. You know, there is a certain amount of privacy that I still retain. And I go look at stuff that is maybe non-tech related. It could be politics. It could be a whole variety of topics, right? You know, do you want me to see every site that you go to? Absolutely not. You're like, oh my God, that creeps you out, right? So I I'll never visit Quora.com ever again. I actually have an account over there. I don't even want to go over there and close the account. I'm just, I'm just going away. I'm not, I'm not going to the website. Why have they stooped to this level of desperation to get social interaction? You know, drastic actions like these make me wonder what else they've been doing with our personal identifiable information. We have to think about that a little bit, really. If they're willing to go this far and put it out there, that this date, and they're being public about it, they're saying they're doing it. But doesn't that just creep you guys all out? I, I think it's a big deal. And I think. It's it's a it's a it's a dynamic shift here that we probably won't see for a long time, and I think more sites are going. And what really kind of even more tripped me out, I went to about twenty of the sites that reported about this that were linked in to the source article that um, TechMeme was tracking. Near a, only one site, I think CNET said, "Hold up." Everyone else was like. Oh, they're going to, this is going to make more social interaction. This is cool. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, what do you mean this is cool? I, I just, uh, it disturbs me quite a bit. So um, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Drop me an email, geeknews at gmail.com. Call the Waste Mail Hotline. Tell me, tell me what you think about this. Because uh, if it doesn't weird you out, sorry, I'm, I, if you think it's cool, let me know. But uh, this, uh, you know, how many more sites are going to do this? Now, if I, don't get me wrong, if I like a page or if I Google Plus it or if I uptick it or whatever I do, that's my decision to say Todd was here and I like this page and I want to share. That's my option. But I might read something and go, oh, my goodness, this is horrible. I, you know, let me back out of here. All right, let's 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 really switch topics. Let's talk about Outlook.com. Okay, Hotmail lovers, um, 
well, are you going to transition to Outlook.com? I, I created an account over there. Didn't transfer my Hotmail account because my Hotmail account is tied to my BBS days. So uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not so sure that I wanted to use that email address. So I have an email, email address over there, geeknews at outlook.com. I logged in and looked at the uh, email system, and I'm sorry. I'm underwhelmed. I, it just, to me, is very plain, kind of boring. Uh, they should have done this five years ago. Um, I don't know. I just uh, wasn't super impressed with it. But, uh, you know, they're definitely ripping up windows here, and uh, they want pe uh, people to pay for office as a service. But nothing, uh, nothing's going to replace Outlook or Thunder, Thunderbird. Not from, at least from my opinion, on a, a, using a web browser. You know, it's, um, I just, I wasn't impressed with it. So I don't know. Love to hear you guys' thought. But uh, if you haven't signed up, the email addresses are going quick. Get over to Outlook.com and claim your email address if you're into uh, signing up for these types of stuff. I don't know if they're going to charge for it or not. Um, so, you know, who knows, but um, you can get it free now. All right, Hulu. Are you a Hulu watcher? Hulu Plus has landed its own channel on the Apple TV. So um, this is a big deal. If you have uh, updated, uh, start restart your set-top box, and guess what? A, gr a bright green Hulu Plus channel showed up on the Apple TV home screen. And um, this is the first time Hulu's appeared on uh, Apple streaming box. And uh, $7.99 a month to have access to its streaming library of TV shows. So uh, good news there. My wife was all excited. Oh, and I'm, I'm like, honey, we can get Hulu on the Roku. <laughs> so um, uh, and she's like, really? And I'm like, yeah. And so I had to take her back through and show her some of the 300 and some channels on the Roku. And, oh, oh, oh. So, uh, of course, she was interested in the price. and how much we could save and what was on. And she's looking at the lineup and everything. So um, anyway, this was a smart move by Apple. The question is, when are they going to open up the Apple TV to the App Store? They haven't announced it yet. That's for sure. Now, along with that, Amazon has brought instant video to an, an app to the iPad. Uh, don't know if Android is next, but uh, you are now able to get Amazon instant video on the iPad. There is not one available for the iPhone. Uh, so uh, definitely check that out and uh, load that up if you've got an Amazon account. Of course, that is a, a subscription system as well. So uh, that's available. Now, if you live in New York City, well, I tell you, any someone that lives in New York City proper, um, and I don't know if that it just if it includes the boroughs or if it's just Manhattan, but we've talked about Aero before, and of course that's A E R E O Aero. And uh, basically, they have uh, they've come up with a dollar day plan, and uh, they're snubbing their noses at, at broadcasters in a in a big way. Now the folks over at GigaOM have got the uh, their full offering laid out here, and I just I wish this was here in uh, in Hawaii. I'm actually gonna let me adjust this here. There we go. Um, so what they've got is what they've made available again over at GigaOM.com. You can uh, try for free. You get uh, just one continuous hour a day. You get uh, no DVR storage. You just get one antenna. And you can do pause and rewind. Now, if you want a day pass, just cost you a dollar a day. So if you're in New York, you can try it out. But you get 10 free days to watch whatever you've recorded, which is kind of cool. So here's the monthly plan. You can go on 8 bucks a month plus tax. You get uh, two antennas, 20 hours of DVR storage, get pause and rewind, and you get reoccurring billing. Or you can sign up for an annual plan up to 80 bucks a year. So that's really the kind of the way to go. Of course, I don't know if they're going to be around a year after this lawsuit gets over. But uh, if you're outside of New York City, this is not available. But uh, for those of you that can get it, any television station that's broadcasting in the New York City area, um, NBC, ABC, CBS, probably some Fox channels, a lot of church stuff, probably some uh, um, shopping networks, that type of stuff. You'll be able to watch on Arrow, and uh, that's you know, so you think about that. That uh, you know, that along with cable cutting, 
hmm, not a not a bad plan. Now I'm sure it's not gonna. I'm sure it's gonna be challenging for some folks, but definitely check it out. You know, for the try it for free, you can actually see if it works uh, uh, where you live. But remember, you can use a, a device, right? You can uh, you can access this, and like I said, you can access via the internet. It's not uh, you don't need like this antenna in your home to pick up the arrow signal, right? So that's the beauty of this thing. You watch it right on your right in your iPad. All right, a court has ruled, and this is uh, this is good news for uh, my vidster. Uh, my vidster has basically won a um, appeal, saying embedding videos is not a crime. Now, my vidster has been uh, fighting a adult production company uh, called FlavaWorks since 2010. Uh, they weren't happy that people were embedding videos on my vidster, taking the embeds and sharing them. So uh, the, there's a little bit of stuff probably going on with the lawsuit still, but the judge at least has said, hey, uh, the embed part is not copyright violation, and uh, this is a big win for this company. Now, here's the interesting part is uh, this has gotten a lot of interest earlier when the uh, MBAA sided with the uh, adult studio and Facebook and Google had filed amicus briefs um, for MyVidster. So big win for Facebook, Google, MyVidster, and of course lost for these other uh, groups. But um, the judge essentially says, MyVidster is giving web surfers addresses where they can find entertainment by listing plays and giving the names and addresses of theaters where they're being performed. The New Yorker is not performing them. It is not transmitted communicating them. My investor doesn't touch the data stream, which flows directly from one computer to another, neither being owned or operated by my investor. So that's where he makes a comparison. So um, this is big. He says, as long as visitors make no copy of the copyrighted video, that he or she is watching. He is not violating copyright owner's exclusive rights. His bypassing Flava's paywall by viewing the uploaded copy is equivalent to stealing a copyrighted book from a bookstore and reading it. That is a bad thing to do in either case, but it is not copyright infringement. So, uh, so far at this, my visitor's off the hook. How often do you use Craigslist? Well, Craigslist has been... Um, essentially battling some folks that have been taking the information off the Craigslist site, making it available and a lot easier to use app. And so Craigslist is now asking you every time you post something on Craigslist to give them exclusive license for your posting. Now, I don't know if this is going to, how this is going to hold up. It says, click and continue confirms that Craigslist is the exclusive licensee of this content with the exclusive rights to enforce copyright against anyone copying, republishing, distributing, or preparing derivative works without its consent. Now, Yelp says in their language, they're saying as, you, as such, you hereby irrevocably grant us worldwide, non-exclusive, royalty-free, sub-license, transferable rights to use your content for any purpose. Here's what Facebook says. Facebook says you specifically give us the following permission. Subject to your privacy and application settings, you grant us a non-exclusive, transferable, sub-license, royalty-free, worldwide license to you may use any IP content that you post on or in connection with Facebook. So get the idea here, non-exclusive, non-exclusive, non-exclusive. And where Craigslist is saying is the exclusive licensee of this content, well, Craigslist is worried about their business model. And uh, they don't want anyone, specifically PadMapper, from uh, taking their results. And this is how they're going to go after them. And when people, most people are not going to know the Delta here. And they're going to click continue to post their stuff for sale on Craigslist because that's where people sell stuff these days. And then when PadMapper comes in and copies that information, they're going to take them to court. And uh, because you have given... Craigslist exclusive, like, you know, all you care about is selling your stuff. You don't care where people find it, right? Well, Craigslist does. They want you to find that on craigslist.com. So uh, pretty interesting what's going on there. All right, let me uh, double check something here. Make sure the stream is still up and running. And I am sure it is. 
what's going on? Is the stream still up and alive? Okay, if you have uh, just updated your Mac or maybe you haven't updated, there's a new or there's an existing um, Wi-Fi network optimizer. And uh, this is uh, this is pretty uh, pretty cool program. And uh, if you want to know how good your Wi-Fi network really is, you can load this network analysis tool, this diagnostic tool that uh, isn't on any menu, and you can uh, see how your uh, Wi-Fi network and how your neighbor's Wi-Fi networks look too, and see what band it's in, what security it is, what the signal is, protocols, and so forth. They give instructions on uh, for mountain lion users and for lion users. So I have this link up. This is by the folks over at uh, lifehacker.com. Another article by Lifehacker is talking about breaking breakdown of a person's Google results, how people look in Google and how to look better. So it talks about places you need to be if you want to be found in, uh, in Google. And uh, I follow pretty much all these. It says, if you want to build your online reputation, you need to be on LinkedIn. You need to have a WordPress site, the blog. You should be on Vimeo or some other video sites. And they list some other sites that you, you should be on to build an online reputation. So, and this is basically as, so people can find you. And when you brand yourself, uh, be able to find you online. And of course, with the way the world works today, you go to get a job. People are going to be searching for you on Google. They're going to be looking to find you. And um, so this is, uh, if you want to brand yourself, this is uh, some good tips here on, on how to do that. All right, Windows 8 has been released to manufacturing. This is exciting. Uh, it means the code's done. But uh, Windows 8 has been leaked. That's not surprising to the Internet. Just a day after it's been, uh, they say it's finished the development cycle. And uh, it's out there on uh, BitTorrent sites and being downloaded. So, you know, this is uh, uh, not surprising. But be careful out there and downloading any pirated copy of uh, Windows 8. You have no idea what's been dropped into the build, and you very likely will have a, a system that's infected. The cost of Windows 8 is going to be near nothing. I think $29.95 is going to be the cost to upgrade. So, you know, don't go out and pirate it. Pay for the registered copy, and uh, you'll be able to, uh, to upgrade. Now, Microsoft is basically apparently a little bit worried about using the word Metro. Of course, that's what they've been advertising for a while, for a while now. But um, what's going on with this is that uh, apparently some firm in the UK owns the rights to the Metro term, and there might be some trademark issues going around. So Microsoft has started to back off using the uh, their Metro term. One of our um, writers, Andrew, who uh, I believe Andrew's in Belfast, and uh, he recently uh, was on a holiday, and... Um, he would use a company called Car, Car Hire. I guess that is a rental company. And when he picked up his vehicle, he was uh, awarded with a Tata, a Tata Indigo. Uh, Tata is an Indian conglomerate, and the Indigo seems to have been developed primarily for sale in India. So he goes on to talk about this uh, POS, or this worst car ever. So um, he was not at all pleased with this vehicle. I, he he is, writes a scathing review of it. So those of you that live outside the United States that listen to the show, um, if you're thinking about uh, renting a car, uh, make sure that you're not getting a Tata uh, as, your, as your rental. And because uh, uh, Andrew definitely is going to give you the lowdown on this vehicle. And if we've assault, insulted any of you folks that are listening to the show from India, we apologize. But... Uh, Definitely wasn't up to the standards that uh, he was used to. And for a vehicle that only cost ten grand, uh, brand new, you kind of can understand the uh, pr probably the quality issues that are out there. Hey, I know that uh, Andrew Edwards over at uh, his show was able to get a, a basically a tour today of uh, Boeing's uh, 787 that was delivered to United. So uh, pretty exciting stuff. They got some great pictures. Uh, I know that uh, Engadget was there as well. So uh, if you're excited about this aircraft as much as I am, of course, you have to fly international routes to probably be on it. But the 787 Dreamliner is, of course, being flown already by ANA. But they got a good tour, and they have a nice write-up of it. I'll have the link up for, of that in the, uh, in the show notes for you, okay? 
All right, another article over on Engadget. Oh, I actually talked about it already, about uh, them downplaying the Metro design name. So we'll keep an eye on this as, as time uh, moves forward. And there's also some screenshots of the Windows 8 build that's over on The Verge. I have links up to the, the build in the show notes so you can check that out. They've got some nice screenshots of some of the stuff that's going to load by default uh, when you do um, the update. You know, one thing that's been uh, big is these new car services. And, you know, anything from getting town cars and a variety of different services are out there. But now it's what's the newest thing that uh, is trying to be launched is peer-to-peer -peer car sharing. And essentially, if you, you know, you go to work, park your car all day, um, there might be the opportunity to actually rent your car out while you're not using it, while it's sitting in a garage or a parking lot during the day while you're at the office. And be able to earn a little money while someone rents your car to do errands around town. So they are starting to, some companies are coming out, uh, Relay Rides is one. And a variety, half a dozen other companies are trying to get off the ground with this. And it's, it's got some uh, growing pains, but uh, pretty cool idea. Uh, don't know if I how I feel about someone else driving my vehicle. Because if I was going to rent my vehicle to a pure stranger, you've got insurance issues and everything else that goes along with it, plus how much would you actually get for it, the risk of them wrecking it or, you know, driving the way you wouldn't want them to. But it might be a way, if you're not so attached to your vehicle, for a way to get some payments made <laughs> um, when you don't need your vehicle or you go on vacation or whatever. So um, kind of an interesting idea. Um, I'm not the type that is basically in love with his vehicle. I have you know, might those of you that have been listening to the show for a while know that I drive vehicles to their to the wheels fall off. Um, I had a van that had uh, close to seven hundred thousand miles on it before I sold it. Uh, the Volvo that I had that my wife bought that I was driving before I bought my uh, CX nine, which was my first brand new, my second brand new car in my whole life, um, drove it to basically its wheels fell off. And, you know, I've already got 50,000 miles on my CX-9, and I plan on driving that to its wheels fall off. So um, I'm not the type that trades vehicles every two or three years. I like to enjoy my, you know, the, the cash that's going into my bank account instead of going to a payment for a new vehicle. Uh, but um, so if you're not super attached to your vehicle, this might be a cool way to uh, earn some money towards those payments. But um Anyway, we'll see, probably see more of this as the year goes on, as they get it refined, and we'll probably see some horror stories as well about uh, <laughs> you know what people do with some people's rides. I guess it's going to have to be uh, something we'll just have to see how it, how it goes. Bandwidth is getting cheaper, um, but not to your home. Um, transit cost. These are the costs that uh, basically that Google and uh, big companies pay to have dedicated connections. Um, we know that there's been a rash of investment and new transit routes have been coming online, but just get this. For example, the cost of a 10 gig e-port in London has dropped 57% to $3.13 per megabit per second, while the same port in New York City has dropped 50% over year over year to $3.50 per meg. And there's a few places in the world where transit costs are really high, um, Africa and places like that. But their, the cost of delivering bits is going down dramatically. So if you look at the New York, um, New York rates, in 2007, people are paying as much as $20 per meg uh, for gig EIP transit. Now, again, they're paying like three bucks. Uh, which is incredible, incredibly lower prices. Now, I know that um, we've been pretty lucky at Raw Voice in um, continuously being aggressive and getting our bandwidth costs down. And uh, I, I, I'm just completely pleased on what we're paying right now. I never thought we'd have got to the point where we are. But it's, um, you know, it's a big cost for us is moving bandwidth. So, you know, every penny or two or three cents that we save is serious dollars that remain in our checking account uh, month to month. And um, it's just, it's, it's incredible. It really is. And um, lots of companies, and I, I attribute a lot of the price drop to stuff that Google has done, stuff that Amazon has done, 
uh, with their CDN services as well. It's uh, it's pretty incredible out there what's happening, but we'll see how it continues over the next few years. All right, Facebook has lost a class a class action suit, and you know the lawyers are going to get paid, and a charity is going to get paid. The users aren't going to get paid, but some people are upset about it. And Facebook is asking a bunch of the stuff in the lawsuit to be sealed. And the judge is uh, considering making Facebook share some advertising revenue do- data that was in the actual um, class action lawsuit. Basically, the people that filed it, all the users who are not going to get a penny, um, the lawyers are going to get like $10 million and some charity is going to get $10 million. Uh, the, basically the users that were part of that came back to judge say, Hey, if, you know, if we're not getting no cash, at least let's, uh, you know, w- let's make it transparent here. So, uh, we'll see if that ruling comes out. It, it could be huge. Um, uh, what's going to happen with this, but, uh, uh, time will tell, but, uh, definitely, uh, these class action law, I think I got a class class action lawsuit, to. Uh, envelope over here somewhere. Where did I put that? Did I show this to you guys? It's like 43 cents or something like, I didn't even know if my bank would actually cash it. Yeah, here it is. It's, uh, it's Hanson versus Google settlement fund. I don't even know that I signed up for this. It was for some sort of advertising. Oh, here. Yeah, here it is. 40. Can you see that? I'm probably showing the check information. 46 cents. (laughs) <laughs> was the check paid to our podcast and connect incorporated todd cochran tory pines bank 46 cents Whew, boy that was that one will buy me a soda right so uh yeah these class action lawsuits pay a lot you guys i told you a few months or not a few weeks ago about my wife almost losing her ipad well a gentleman by the name of David Pogue lost his iPhone on the train. And uh, basically, he was able to get it back by Find My Phone. And uh, apparently, the person that uh, took it uh, wasn't smart enough to completely scramble it. But uh, basically, the police went to the, after much work, and he didn't live in the area where the phone was actually at. Um, some folks were. It was uh, uh, close to Washington, D.C., uh, just outside of, uh, where was it at? Let me look. Deanwood or something like that is where they were close to. But anyway, the uh, um, a local police officer went over to the house that it was showing that it was located at and said, hey, <laughs> give it up. Uh, the guy's not going to press charges. We know what's here, and, and I guess the owner did. But uh, talks about how this guy was able to recover it to, by just tweeting and asking for uh, and asking for help. Hey, the Senate has delayed and maybe killed the cybersecurity bill. Uh, the Senate failed to end the debate on a comprehensive security bill, cybersecurity bill, pushing action into September and uh, potentially killing it. The uh, administration wants this to go through, but the Senate voted fifty-two to forty-six to end debate. And uh, so, anyways, it's not. Uh, they needed sixty votes, and it didn't happen. So this one, it will, uh, we'll see what happens with this in September. Samsung has gotten themselves in some deep trouble. Samsung went public with excluded evidence. And basically, it's obvious they were trying to undercut Apple's design claims. The judge is not happy. Um, the, the Apple's legal team is basically saying the trial should be over. We should, be, we should win by default. We don't know if uh, some Samsung did this to try to taint the jury or the whole story here. But basically, evidence that was going to be excluded because it wasn't submitted in time, um, they just basically released. And you know, it's the first I've ever kind of heard of a company doing this before. But uh, Apple's basically said, hey, judge, they did this. This is not fair. Uh, we want a winning verdict for the evidence leak. We'll see if they get it. I don't know if they will, but the judge is not happy, and the judge wants sanctions. So basically, the law firm and Samsung's probably going to have to pay some fines. Someone may go to jail for contempt of court. Who knows? But um, uh, they basically said that Apple asserts that Samsung's misconduct is particularly egregious because it impu- imp- <laughs> impunged 
the integrity of the court and that the damage of willfully going to the press and cannot be undone. And these, these patent trials are ridiculous. Again, we're squiveling over rectangles. Now, in another troll issue, uh, this is, well, Samsung's not a troll, but another troll case, a judge is going to hammer um, New York federal judge, Gary Brown, has made it clear he's not a fan of copyright trolls. And in May, he handed down a scathing order decrying the blizzard of copyright lawsuits by a porn company and putting in place safeguards to rent few their abuses. One of those safeguards that he put in was the ISPs were supposed to provide defendants court, excuse me, provides defendant contact information to the court rather than to plaintiff Malibu Media. That way, the court could advise the defendants of their legal rights and help them find counsel before the plaintiffs had an opportunity to harass them into paying for bigger settlements. So this is what was ordered. You give me the list. You do not pass that to a Malibu directly. But Malibu basically said, Oh, well, they ignored the judge. They sent Cablevision a subpoena requesting that the defendant's contact information be sent directly to Malibu. Cablevision knew that this court order was in effect and they weren't supposed to. They sent the information to the judge and the judge just said, hey, OK, you're going to violate my my order. He says, you got two weeks. You got two weeks to explain. Why you have failed to basically um, follow my instructions. And he says, it's astonishing that counsel failed to observe the precaution established in the order. And he's giving them two weeks to explain what they've done and decide what sanctions are called for. I hope he just hammers them. You know, these companies don't care. All they want to do is extort money from people, in my opinion. Now, these patent trolls that are out there, a new bill is being interested in the House of Representatives. I think this is a good one. It's attempting to deter frivolous patent litigation by forcing unsuccessful patent plaintiffs to cover defendants' legal costs. This was introduced by, introduced by Representative Peter DeFazio, Democrat of Oregon, and co-sponsored by uh, Representative Jason uh, Chaptez, Republican of Utah. It's called the Saving High-Tech Innovators from Regis legal disputes called the Shield Act, and it's limited to patents related to computer hardware and software. So they basically want these trolls, these patent trolls, if they lose, to pay up and pay the legal costs of the company that they went against. This is this a good one. It really is. Now, not only do legal firms ignore court orders, the TSA is ignoring court orders as well. The TSA was ordered by a court over a year ago to justify their utilization of, of body scanners. And they were supposed to come up with um, essentially a set of um, rulemaking. They're supposed to, they were supposed to develop rules on the use of the scanners, and they're supposed to publish that and make it available for public comment and then they could implement the rules. And the TSA failed and did not do these requirements, have ignored it. The group that was basically took them to court to make them to put these, basically these rules in place, went back to the judge and said, hey, what? They haven't done it. They denied your order. So the judges went back to the TSA and said, hey, you got until the end of August to get this stuff published and explain what you've done here. So here we got the judge has told the TSA what to do, and they've just basically thumbed it. What are we coming to when a judge's order is ignored? Lawyers are doing it? It just tells me there's not enough teeth, and people need to go to jail. Okay, you, you know, I'm not saying that they're going to haul, haul a cabinet. Of course, they probably can't because it's executive uh, branch, and they're not going to haul the... Uh, the head of the TSA or the Homeland Security in front of the judge, and he's not going to put her in jail. But at the same time, these these groups just ignore the uh, the judicial system. 
It's just, it's maddening. It really is. All right, that's what we got on legal stuff. Let me uh, switch gears here a little bit. Um, big weekend coming ahead. The Mars uh, landing on uh, Sunday night, Monday morning. And then, of course, we have tomorrow. NASA's going to announce the winners of their NASA Commercial Crew Program, CCI CAP. Of course, it's short for Commercial Crew Integrated Cap Capability. And uh, this is this is big. It's a big, 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 big deal here. And uh, it's basically an award some basically who's going to get some contracts. Um, $830 million, I think, is what's on the line here. So a uh, big deal on uh, who's going to get to participate in uh, building a crew capsule to go to uh, go to space. Well, Knight Capital. Anybody do any trading? Knight Capital has uh, basically had a, uh, a logarithm that basically cost them $10 million per minute as it was trading out of control for 45 minutes. Computer basically took over and did a bunch of stuff it wasn't supposed to. And a whole bunch of uh, companies' uh, stocks were um, affected, including uh, Wizard Media, which is uh, another podcasting competitor of ours. Their stock got uh, drove way up, and they canceled half the orders. And it's it's crazy what happened, but uh, um, the companies got hammered. But uh, computers decided it wanted to trade stock <laughs> in a big way, and uh, something happened. But four hundred forty million dollar mistake for that company. Uh, that'll be an expensive one. We'll see if they survive it. All right, Firefox continues to gain his Internet Explorer and Chrome slide. So worldwide uh, combined ma browser market, July 2012, Internet Explorer 49.01, Firefox 18.34, Chrome 17.16. And then there's some more totals in here on uh, breaking it down a little further. I'll have that link up in the show notes for you to, uh, to check out. Um, Kim.com has uh, basically been told that he's a fraudster by Twitter and Facebook and they can't verify his account. And you, it's illegal to use uh, the word .com as your last name. <laughs> so apparently, uh, even though the U.S. government has accused Megalopopular founder Kim.com of conspiracy to defraud, it appears that uh, now Twitter and Facebook uh, don't believe he is who he says he is. And there's a pretty com comical uh, back and forth between him and Twitter uh, staff and uh, and Facebook as well. So I have that link up in the show notes for you to uh, check out. Um, bands are uh, telling their fans on how to get to the Pirate Bay in the UK because of the all the blocking. So it's pretty funny that bands are showing people how to uh, bypass to get to their music. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, I'm sure legislatures and judges and stuff that are trying to get Pirate Bay shut down must grind their teeth when they do that. If you were so unfortunate to buy the uh, IPO stock of Facebook, um, you know, it's went from 38.23 to a close today of uh, 20 bucks and it dipped a little bit below 20 for the day. So, uh, boy, and the state of California is actually getting hurt on this because they thought they were going to get about $19 billion in tax receipts, but yeah, all the Founders and people that held stock at uh, Facebook on their, you know, basically big cash dividend award and what they'd have to pay tax on. So they're having to adjust their tax um, numbers for the year, uh, counting their chickens before they hatch. But the stock continues to uh, to get hammered. Um, Marissa Meyer at, over at Yahoo has brought in her first Googler. She bought in a PR staffer. So that's kind of interesting. She's starting off by bringing in uh, Folks to uh, shape the PR message there. So uh, uh, interesting move by her on that. All right, last two things. You ever be in your bedroom or in the house and have a mosquito just driving you crazy? Well, there's a new device out there. It's called the Mosquito Flame Thrower. And it will zap those uh, little uh, babies. And all you got to do is me laying in bed and sit up and uh, touch it off. And it will... Shoot about a three foot flame and be guaranteed to uh, to get that uh, to get that uh, that mosquito. And I'll be sure not to catch the curtains on fire. <laughs> um, okay, I don't know if this is a joke, but uh, they say this is available for sale, and I would not have one of these in my house because kids see this kind of stuff and they would just have uh, a great time. And then your house is your house is uh, uh, full of ash. 
And the uh, last article for tonight over at Ogizmo, a, a Lego wheelchair. So uh, some folks were able to uh, put together a uh, Lego-built wheelchair, and it actually drives around. There's a YouTube video of it. I'll have a link up there in the show notes for you to check that out. But it actually moves. It works. You can set in and get rolled around. Of course, there's not a big guy like me that's sitting in this thing yet, but uh, uh, I guess it uh, it works. So pretty cool. There, you, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of dollars there in uh, robotic controllers and stuff. But uh, my son is uh, still out tonight, and when he gets home, I'm going to show him this. He's going to be like, "Whoa, cool!" I know that's exactly what he's going to say. All right, let me go ahead and get into the email here, then we'll get everyone out of here for tonight. We're actually doing okay on time, all things considering. And uh, let me go up and go into the comments. And uh, let's see what we have here. What is today's date? Today's the second. The last show was on the 30th. All right, not too much email. Um, got an email here to... Oh, I got this from Andrew. He says... Um, Basically say, don't forget about us if we need guests for the morning show. Oh, yeah, he gives me some tips. I guess I'm not supposed to read this on the air. Um, Andrew, thanks for these suggestions. All these are really good, and I and I know what you're saying on many of these things. And actually, uh, Sam, one of our Ohana members, has pinged me on some of the same things as well. So uh, I, two of you are hitting me up, so I need to listen. So thanks for uh, sending that over to me. I guess we only had one email come in from uh, the past last show. That's kind of odd. So uh, anyway, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the show now. But uh, hey, as always, folks, thanks for thanks for being here and being part of the family and and uh, and being subscribed. You can reach me at Twitter at Geek News. Email address is geeknews at gmail.com. And of course, the voicemail hotline is 619-342-7365. And we, of course, we want to thank our sponsors here at the show as well. And, and definitely take time, if you can, go over and check out our promo codes at geeknewscenter.com forward slash GoDaddy. And uh, pick up some uh, domains, pick up a hosting account, whatever it may be. Don't forget our forget about our special code this month where you can save 20% off on, on all orders. And of course, we want to thank the good our good friends over at GoToMeeting as well for sponsoring the show. Get a free 30-day trial. Go over to GoToMeeting.com. Click on the Try It Free button and use the promo code podcast. I'll be with you on Saturday for Saturday Morning Tech. And then we're going to have our Hangout Sunday to uh, to watch the Curiosity rover uh, make its landing on the planet Mars. We'll keep our fingers crossed that everything goes well. But we'll basically hang out together and talk about it and watch it happen. So I hope that you'll join me for that Sunday evening. Again, we'll get started at uh, 6.30 Hawaiian, 9.30 Pacific, or 12.30 in the morning, or 0030 on the East Coast. I know we've got some East Coast people that are going to stay up and watch. So um, you'll be tired for work, but it'll be worth it. You can geek out and tell all your friends about how you saw the rover either make it find or else so anyway um you'll be the first to know with that along with the rest of us but everyone else take care we'll see you next time thanks for being here of course thanks for being part of the family and thanks for supporting the show it's been my pleasure to bring this to you take care and aloha